If you're not sure how to differentiate polynomials, make sure that you watch the video on that before trying this particular video. See, we're going to have a look at an application of such differentiation, and in particular we're going to look at dif uh, displacement and velocity and how they can be looked at with differentiation. So we're going to do this by looking at an example. And the example says in every cycle, a, a piston's displacement s, uh, measured in centimetres, as a function of time t, is given by the function s of t equal to t cubed minus 6t squared plus 8t. Now you can see that shown in the little diagram here. Basically it's saying that the piston's displacement from equilibrium starts out at zero, it's at equilibrium, be begins to move up, so it's moving away from its equilibrium position, then starts to come back down as time increases, gets back to the equilibrium spot, drops down negative, and then starts to come back. So it's got this sort of um, cyclic sort of nature to it, as pistons would, and here it's described by a cubic polynomial. Now that's the displacement. So what we're going to do is find the instantaneous velocity of the piston when t is equal to 2 seconds. To do that, we'll find the velocity for any time. And we're going to do that by actually finding the derivative of s of t, the instantaneous rate of change of displacement with respect to time. That is the velocity of the piston. Now note that the piston's displacement is given by this function, which is a cubic polynomial. So we can just use our rules for differentiating that we've already developed. So first up for a, the instantaneous velocity, I'm going to call that v of t. It's going to be the derivative of s with respect to time. That's just going to be, okay, first of all, we've got t cubed, so I'm going to say that's 3t squared when I differentiate it, minus the derivative of 6t squared, so that's going to be, leave the 6, multiply it by the 2 when we bring it down to get 12, t to the 2 minus 1, that's just t to the 1. And then finally, plus the derivative of 8t, that's 8, and then t to the 1 minus 1 is going to be t to the 0, which is just 1, so we leave it like that. So the velocity at, or the instantaneous velocity of the piston at any time is given by this function here. We're asked to find it for t equals 2 seconds. All we have to do is substitute in t equals 2. So we get 3 by 2 squared, which is 4. Take 12 by 2 and plus 8. So we're going to get all together there. 12 minus 24 is minus 12. Plus 8 is going to be minus 4. And we can put in the units too if we like, centimetres per second. So minus 4 centimetres per second is the velocity. So it's moving uh, backwards, I guess, if you like. Let's see if that makes sense. If we're sitting up here at t equals 2, that's where the red dot is. Now the displacement is 0, sure. But if you look at the, the slope of the function, it's going down this way. So it's in a negative direction. And so that corresponds here with our minus. So yeah, it is moving backwards or down, if you like. So that's our instantaneous velocity of the piston when t is 2 seconds. Second part of the question, up here part B, says when is the velocity zero? Now looking at the picture here, I'm not really sure when that is. I can see the displacement, but I can't see the velocity really. I could say though that the, um, the slope of the function, which gives us the rate of change, which gives us the velocity, looks to be positive in this section and negative here, and then back positive over here. In between, it looks like it might be zero at those sort of turning points in the curve. So I'm expecting to get something like maybe a 1 and maybe a 3, or something roughly along those lines. The way we actually figure it out is just to set the velocity function to 0. So there's our velocity there that we just found by differentiating s. I'm going to set that to 0, set v of t equal to 0, and I have 0 equal to 3t squared minus 12t plus 8, and that's just a quadratic equation. So we can use a quadratic formula to solve that. And we've got t uh, should be two values, it'll be negative b, which is going to be 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 144, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 8, all divided by 2 times a, 2 times 3. Okay, so cleaning that up a bit, we're going to get, that's equal to 12 plus or minus 144 minus 96, so that's the square root of 48, right there. And my calculator tells me that's roughly 6.9. So I'm going to make this approximate, 6.9, all divided by 6. And that means we've then got 12 plus 6 over 6. So that's going to be about 3.2. And our other one, 12 minus 6.9 over 6, is about 0 0.9, according to my calculator. So we've got two values for time 
at which velocity is equal to zero. Let's jump back to that graph, 3.2 and 0 0.9. Uh, yeah, that looks roughly speaking about where I thought, around one and around three. So the velocity is zero for this piston at time 3.2 approximately and 0.9. So we've managed to use differential calculus to investigate the instantaneous velocity of a piston that we knew the, the movements of, the displacement of, and then also finding when its displacement, uh, sorry, its velocity was equal to zero. So displacement and velocity, as we've seen, are related through differentiation. Now what I could have done before, remember I was talking about the graph, I didn't know when the velocity was zero according to this graph. Given that we know what V is, we can also graph that function. So what I've done here in this picture here is you can see in the solid line that's our displacement and the dotted line is the graph of V of T from our example. So you can see that the velocity is positive and it goes through zero, the zero velocity at I think it was 0.9. Then it flows through as a negative value up until we hit I think it was 3.2 and then became positive again. And that corresponds, if you look in this picture over here where I've just overlaid some green and red bits, telling us that when the velocity up here is positive in the green section, our displacement curve is increasing. Then when we hit the red section, velocity is negative, and we can see that our displacement is dropping down. Till we hit that turning point again, where velocity is zero, and we start to rise up in the green section. So we can see some relationships starting to build up there between functions and their derivatives. Anyway, there's actually tons of applications of derivatives and differentiation. Velocity and displacement are not the only ones. Have a look at maybe some textbooks or some other websites to see if you can see some others and try out some examples in different contexts. Maybe some will make it easier to understand for you. Here we've seen how to move from displacement to velocity. Think about how you do the reverse. What about if we knew the velocity and we wanted to obtain the displacement? How would we go about doing that? But for now, just so that you get a bit more practice, make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheets.